Let's take a look at the Guayon Cocktail, an interesting variation on the martini. Welcome to the Cocktail Spirit from Small Screen Network. I'm your host, Robert Hess. The Guyon Cocktail, um, I first ran across it in the old Waldorf Astoria Bar Book, or actually from the Waldorf Astoria Bar Days, which predates uh, the Bar Book by a few years. Um, it's one of the recipes they served quite a bit at the Waldorf Astoria. It apparently was named after a family member from the Guyon steamship line. They were a steamship that went from London to New York. They were one of, one of the major lines on that route in the late 1800s. About 1892, they ended up going bankrupt for whatever reason. Businesses do that sometimes. And I guess one of the family members after that was a regular at the Waldorf Astoria, and so they named this drink after him. Let's take a look. We start off with one and a half ounces of gin. This recipe specifically called for Plymouth gin, so that's what we're using. And then we add one and a half ounces of sweet vermouth. To that, we're going to add two dashes of orange bitters. I'm using the, the Bitter Truth orange bitters here. One of the interesting things, anybody that's researched into cocktails much at all, you see orange bitters using an awful lot in the old recipes. After Prohibition, around you know 1940s, when new cocktail recipe books started coming around, you see orange bitters used less and less. Angostura bitters becomes the only bitters out there. For during the 1990s, when the cocktail renaissance was happening, we're all looking at these old books and saying, gee, all these books are asking for orange bitters, and we can't find it. Um, when orange bitters finally came back on the market again, we were extremely pleased, because now we could take and have drinks like the Martini, uh, which originally called for orange bitters, made the way it would have been made prior to Prohibition, when those cocktails really were in their heydays. So again, we're using a gin drink with orange bitters, which is predominant. And quite frankly, what we've got here is ounce and a half of gin, ounce and a half of sweet vermouth, orange bitters. This is essentially the, the original martini before it was dried out by using dry vermouth instead of sweet. Uh, but why is this the Guayon cocktail? Why is it, what makes this different? Well, what's gonna make it different is the step I do at the very end, which, which I'm not quite ready for yet. Now let's add the ice. And like any drink that uses all clear ingredients, we stir it rather than shake it. James Bond, of course, would have made his drink wrong by asking for it shake, shake and not stirred. I'm gonna pour it in our glass. Now, since this dates from the Waldorf story days and the heydays of, of cocktails, I'm gonna use a nice old cocktail glass. The gold rim kind of matching the color we're getting from the sweet vermouth coming through. Now, I mentioned there's a, there's a difference to the drink. This difference is now going to come in with the finish, final garnish step. We're going to take and use a spoon of Benedictine. That's the way the recipe called for. Uh, they didn't say exactly what that measure was. They said a spoon. So rather than my normal small bar spoon that I love to stir with, I'm instead going to use a larger spoon so I can take and actually add a nice flavored dollop on the top. Benedictine, of course, is a herbal liqueur with a lot of flavors to it. Um, so this is going to definitely add some interesting characteristics. It's really not going to float on the top like a Pouscafé might, uh, but instead it's going to incorporate, but just not quite the same way as incorporating in the drink. So let's take a look at this guy on cocktail and see what it tastes like. And of course, by pouring the Benedictine on the top, one of the predominant aromas I'm getting is the herbs from the Benedictine. The, the sweet vermouth herbs and the gin botanicals are also playing a nice flavor role in there. Uh, they blend really well, uh, all three of those ingredients. The Benedictine is a real big note in this drink. If, if you don't like Benedictine, um, you may not like this drink, or this drink might be a good way to introduce yourself to that flavor, since it really does take and, and capture a good component of it. The, the gin and the sweet vermouth are kind of a background notes that are going on to it. So it's sweeter than a regular martini might be. Um, it's probably a little bit more flavorful component than a regular sweet martini um, would be, but personally, I think it's an excellent cocktail. The Guayan cocktail. Mm -hmm.